Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts and today I'm going to do a tutorial for this crumpled griddle stitch gingham blanket. This is a pattern that can be made with these shades of Karen Simply Soft. Um, it's part of a little curated box that I've done with Yarnspirations and um, mainly because this feathered gray color is really hard to get and they found some in their supply and we put this box together so that you have two gray shades that really make a gingham blanket look so great. That is the key to gingham is to find two shades of one color that are fairly, you know, maybe a couple shades apart, I guess you would say so that you can get the gingham blanket look. So in the box that you get from Yarn Inspirations, you get three skeins of white, three skeins of feathered gray, and three skeins of gray heather. However, I am noticing that the gray heather has slightly less yarn in this. It makes me wonder if they're changing Karen Simply Soft up just a little bit or if it was just this color, the Heather's collection. But you'll have plenty in the box to make um, this blanket with the five squares across and five squares high is 34 by 36. It's a great baby blanket size. You could probably make this just a little bit bigger and still have plenty of yarn. Um, I just have it, and with me noticing that this is you know this one says that it has 315 yards and this is only 250 yards i'm gonna say maybe you could make this slightly uh like maybe five squares by seven squares um so keep that in mind but this color is actually really easy to get if you did run out and you need it um you're going to always use this color however in every row so you do use the most of this lighter color so if you can see this silver feather gray is used alternating with the dark gray and then we switch to the white and it's used up in that row too so i'm going to teach you the sample i'll teach you how to ch change yarn colors while you're working the crumpled griddle stitch. Um, I do want to point out, however, I do want to point out that the gray gets carried through the row and you can see it just a, ever so slightly peeking through the white. Um, however, it, it really adds to the overall gingham look and it just doesn't become a problem once the blanket is finished. So, but this stitch does a really good job of hiding that yarn just enough so that it will just barely peek through. So anyway, okay, let's get started. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the hook size. Um, you could possibly be using an H five millimeter or a 5.5 millimeter or maybe even a J. Doing a practice swatch with gingham will be the best time to determine which um, hook size is the best for you. I'm going with the eye. Mainly you want to just make sure that your, when you carry the yarn, that you have just loose enough tension to cover up the yarn, but not too tight where that your gingham blanket really turns out into being more like a doormat instead of like a nice draped blanket. So I am choosing the I hook for my personal tension. So if you have looser, you might want to go with the H, but this is the time to do that practice swatch. So we are going each, each square is 25 stitches. So, but since I'm going to do just this, I, I really want you to be able to make a quick um, sample each square is gonna be 11 stitches. You just need an odd number. And this actually, you could, um, this would help you, you could 
mix up the size of your squares. It's really, really flexible how to do gingham. But for the blanket, the squares are 25 stitches across. So your base chain would be 126. So I'm just gonna do 11 stitches and multiply that by three and add one. And so we're gonna make a base chain of 34 chains. repeat that your base chain will be any number times 25 plus 1 if you would like the large squares that are in that gray gingham blanket but for today I'm just doing a tutorial with the squares will be 11 chains so we're going to begin in the second chain from the hook with a single crochet and then begin and then make a double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now we will alternate this across the next nine chains, single and double. This stitch combination is what we have come to learn as called the crumpled griddle. And it simply means that on the next row, the double crochets are worked into the top of the double crochets from the previous row, and the single crochets are worked into the single crochets. On a regular griddle stitch, the opposite is occurring. Doubles are into singles, singles are into doubles. So this is more if you can think of it as stacking the stitches. Okay, so your last stitch of this block of the first, you know, feathered gray, the little silver color, is a single crochet. It's 11 stitches. We started with a single. We are ending with a single. So at this point, I'm going to Put my silver color, lighter gray color to the front of my work and I will simply lay the darker gray color over my hook and pull through. That is our first 11 stitches, the first block. If you're doing the larger blocks, it would be stitch number 25 or just whatever odd number you decide to use. Now, I'm going to be carrying the lighter color along with me and working over it. So, we ended with a single crochet. We will begin this next block of colors with a double crochet, because that will be the stitch next in the pat in the sequence for the crumpled griddle stitch. So we're always alternating doubles and singles. Okay, I have 11 stitches in the dark gray color. My last stitch is a double crochet. So I've already yarned over, pulled through just two loops, and now I'm going to be keeping the dark gray color to the back of my work or away from me. You always wanna keep these two colors, one to the front, one to the back. That will help you to keep the yarn from twisting. Now, before I pull through, I want to make sure that yarn is in the back. And then I also give this uh, light gray, yarn just a little bit of a tug to make sure I have it laying flat along the row. So then I pull through and we're going to work over the dark gray color now. The last um, box or square of your blanket will should always begin with a single crochet. And you'll notice that actually, as we alternate all the lighter colors in this uh, section, 
The light silver are always beginning and ending with single crochet. The dark is beginning and ending with double crochet. Okay, here's the last single crochet of the row. And we will just pull through with the single, uh, with the light gray color, because we're gonna still be using it. Chain one and turn. And here you go, we've got our first row of crumpled griddle stitch and first row of the gingham blanket. Now this dark color simply just wraps around the end and we'll begin with single crochet and we put our hook underneath the dark gray, have it lay against the row and uh, pull up. Wow, I'm getting a little rainstorm here. Okay, so now I'm going to work double crochet into my double crochets, singles into singles. Okay, so the last stitch of this light gray color is the single crochet. And here's very important what I'm saying. We want to make sure we bring the yarn forward before we pull through with the gray. And then I give it just a little bit of a tug. And then we're ready to go to crochet over it as we work the darker color. Now, like I was saying before, you can make a gingham blanket with any two shades of color uh, and a white or a cream, or sometimes I can do two shades of color and then add a gray. But the trick is to just find which color of the three colors is a, like the medium shade. And that's the color that gets um, carried through the entire blanket and that's what will give you the gingham look. So the lightest color and the darkest color never alternate one with another. Okay, put the darker color to the back, pull through with the lighter color, and we've got row two done. I'm always starting the lighter color with a single crochet, and here's the double crochet. of this row is a single crochet and I'm going to chain one and turn, wrap the darker color, oh, and I'm always turning like a page in a book. I'm going to wrap that darker color around the end so that I can work under it. Now, a lot of people in the past have asked me, why do you carry that darker color through that last um, box of color or the last square when you don't really have to because you could drop it and pick it up here, but you just want to maintain the same weight throughout the entire blanket. It'll make, so that's why the yarn just gets carried through the whole blanket. It's just an easier way I have found to do so many color changes. Okay, so for the, uh, see, carrying it to the front. So for the big blanket, the squares were, like I said, 25 stitches this way, and then 
For me, it was 20 rows. You just want to make them square. So say you have slightly larger tension than me, maybe um, 18 rows. I'm not sure. If you're tighter, maybe it was 22 rows. Um, but for me, it was 20 rows of the crumpled uh, gingham stitch. Also depends on what yarn you do actually end up using. If you, a um, lot of variables. So I like to try and make it as flexible as possible so that you can get the look that matches your own personal tension. Okay, so I'm going to just finish these squares up and then I'll show you how to introduce the white, drop the dark, and then you're gonna be on okay, your Okay, so way. for this little sample, I just did eight rows high. Um, but what I mainly do is you're just going to want to measure how wide your circles are. These are, uh, sorry, squares. This is about three and a quarter and they are about three inches high. That's about as square as I can get it. Um, I want to always have an even number of rows high. So that if you are branching out and doing it on your own, making your own squares. So we are done with the dark color. So we just need to snip that off. We'll weave that end in later and we'll introduce the white. So the white will now begin with one single crochet and we're going to wrap, try find that light gray color. We're gonna wrap that around the end so that we have it to carry along the row. And we begin again, same, same thing. Always begin with a single crochet for the first block of color. And then the second block begins with the double crochet. Now I'm going to choose to keep my white to the back since my gray was forward. It doesn't matter what color stays forward or back. I just, just choose one and keep one to the front and one to the back just so that they won't twist on, on each other. And here we go. Singles into singles, doubles into doubles. And you have got this. Um, you got it. That's the gingham blanket. That's the technique. So let me go over a few more things just to make sure you've got this right. So like I said, each square here was 25 stitches across of the grump crumpled griddle, 25 and 20 rows high. So, and then the I did five squares across, starting with a starting chain of 126. I think we went over the fact that you can make each square any odd number, and you will multiply that odd number times an odd number, then add one for your base chain, because we want to begin our blanket with one color and end it on the same color. So there's five across, five blocks of color across. And then there's also five blocks of color high. 
So the and then a little tip about the border. So this border is just, I did a row of single crochet, a row of double crochet, and a row of single crochet. Nothing, I just kept it very simple. But I want you to know that you will be working. So say, remember we have the um, 25 stitches across and it was 20 rows high, you still are going to try work and get 25 single crochets in each block of color. So you just kind of add them in. I did one per the end of the row, uh, but then every fifth time or third time, just make sure you get an extra single crochet. That will really make your border nice and flat as you go. And then you don't have to worry about it on the row that you do so just crochet. make sure you are getting 25 single crochets per every 20 rows. That's how you get a nice flat border, a nice um, beginning border. And then like I said, then you don't have to worry about it. You've got plenty of double crochets and then a round of single crochets. The corners were, I just did a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, same with the double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And that's it. Just got those nice little corners. But like I said, you can do any edge that you would like for this blanket. So then you're going to just weave in the ends and you're done. <laughs> Although this this took took a little bit of time. So probably give yourself two weeks to finish one maybe this size if you can work on it but what I have found oh and you see my little error right here I didn't notice it till I was way too far I messed up my stitching there but it gets exciting to see the blanket grow so it is a project that's really fun to keep going and and watch it grow we have over 23 gingham blanket patterns on our website. So if you head to daisyfarmcrafts.com, click the menu heading crochet blankets and scroll down to the gingham ha heading, you will see all the gingham blankets. Of course, if you're seeing this on YouTube, I will link that post down into the description. And I really hope you enjoy uh, this blanket. Thank you so much for purchasing the box. If you were lucky enough to get one, you also got this really cute Daisy Farm Crafts tape measure with our little logo on it. Thank you so much to Yarnspirations for collaborating on us with this box. It was really exciting to get these shades all in one box for you. So you should have plenty to make this size and maybe even a little extra to make it slightly bigger. So. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I apologize for the rain and the extra noise, if you can hear it, of the yard people that are at my neighbor's house. So anyway, all right, we'll see you next time.